Would you like to take a sneak peek into the salary of a real life Java developer over a 17 year career? Then hello, I'm willing to be your test subject because in this video, I'm going to run through all my roles and all the pay rises I had, as well as all the fools I had because there were a few of those as well. And whether you're just considering a career in software development or you've already got started, I think there's gonna be some interesting nuggets that you can apply to your own situation. So let's get right into it. And here's the big picture of my career as a whole. We're gonna start off in 2005, when if you saw my last video, you'll know that I just finished university and I was struggling to find my first role. I'd done computer science, but I didn't really know much about Java at the time. I didn't have any industry experience and I was just fairly mediocre. But eventually one company took pity on me. They were based in St. Albans, just outside London here in the UK and my first salary was £20,000 which was probably about average for the time for an average developer. Anyway, I worked at this company for a couple of years creating Java web applications for managing assets for newspaper companies and eventually I decided to shoot for my dream which had always been to live and work in the exciting capital city of the UK here, London. So I managed to find this job paying £32,000 in Camden in London and I started there but things didn't go to plan. I didn't really like how things were going in terms of the way that they were developing software. They weren't reusing code, they were copy and pasting code and I didn't have the confidence to really change things at the time. So after about six months I decided to leave this company. I consider that I got quite lucky at the time and I ended up applying to a company that kind of changed the trajectory of my career on a very positive note. And this was a company I hadn't heard of before, but they were called ThoughtWorks. They're essentially an IT consultancy. And I went to interview and they liked some of the things that I had to say about the lack of code reusability on my last role. So I got the job at ThoughtWorks for 39,000 pounds and I'd almost doubled my starting salary from two years previously. And in this role, I got some really great exposure that really made me into more of a well-rounded developer. I worked for clients such as the Guardian newspaper, the B&Q DIY website, and also a telecommunications company over in Calgary, Alberta. And in each of these clients that I worked for, I was involved in not just delivering projects, but also some element of agile coaching and teaching developers how to do test-driven development, which is something that I practice to this day. And ThoughtWorks is quite a well-known company in the software industry, and to be able to put this on my CV and to be able to talk about agile software development with some level of confidence really helped me out in future interviews. But after a couple of years, I decided that I wanted to take some time off to go traveling. I'd never really taken a gap year or anything like that before, so I thought better now than never. So I said goodbye to my colleagues, packed my bags, and went by bus and train all the way through Western Europe, Eastern Europe, and then onto Russia. And I actually took the Trans-Mongolian Railway all the way to China and explored Asia for a month or two. And that was a really great trip. But I came back and then thought about what's gonna be my next step in my career as a Java developer. And I'd always heard people talking about this thing, contracting. I didn't really know what it was. I just knew that generally people got paid a lot more. So I looked into it and decided I was gonna give it a shot. And basically realized that contractors, they work on a daily rate, um, whereas permanent employees, they get paid on an annual basis. They don't get any of the benefits that permanent employees get, so they don't get any holiday allowance or pension contributions. And they generally have a really short notice period of say one week as opposed to a month or more for permanent employees. But in the UK here, companies in general for Java developers pay 85% more for contractors than permanent employees. And the reason for this is that if they have a short-term development project, they can just get a load of contractors in, get the project completed, and then get rid of them really easily at the end of the project. So I took my first contracting role at the BBC, British Broadcasting Company, for £87,000. And by the way, the way I'm calculating the annual salary for a contractor who gets paid on a daily basis is to take the day rate, multiply it by five to get the weekly rate, and then multiply it by 45 to get an annual rate considering seven weeks holiday. I was creating a web application for the BBC News website 
But eventually I decided to pursue one of my childhood dreams, which was to work in the gaming industry. And I remember as a kid, I used to play this game called Theme Park, which is where you get to create roller coasters and set rides up in the theme park. And then you have visitors come and they either have a great time or they just vomit everywhere. And I'd always wanted to work on a game like this, so I started looking at roles in the gaming industry and I realised that I couldn't really do contracting because they were all permanent roles. So I took a significant pay drop to work for Playfish, a studio of electronic arts, and I was earning £55,000. But it was a really fun place to work, there were lots of quirky artists drawing strange characters, and I was working on Facebook games, games built on top of the Facebook platform. But there was an interesting end to this role, which lasted about two years, because people eventually decided that they didn't want to play Facebook games anymore, and we saw the audiences start to drop off. And Electronic Arts decided to make a whole load of people redundant, and they were asking people whether they wanted to take voluntary redundancy. The laws here in the UK make it quite difficult for companies to fire people, but in the case of redundancy, they give you a payout and they can just get rid of you quite quickly. So I put my hand up, I volunteered for this, and I took about six months off and used the money to go traveling. I went to Thailand this time and learned how to dive. So I came back to the UK and got back into contracting and I'll summarise this period from 2013 to 2015 as building up more and more experience. I started as a mid-level Java developer and by the end of it I was definitely knocking on the door of the senior Java developer camp. And at the end I was working for a broadcasting company called Sky in London. They had a great campus with new restaurants, new offices and great facilities and I was earning £123,000 per year. And during my time at Sky I was getting some exposure to some technologies which would be important to me later on which were Amazon Web Services which is the cloud computing service and also Kubernetes which is a container orchestration framework making it very easy to deploy your applications. But eventually all good things must come to an end and I decided once again that it was time to take some time off. I said goodbye to my colleagues and this time went travelling just for two months into Spain, the Catalonia region, went to places like Barcelona. And while I was in Spain my funds started dwindling again and I realised I was going to have to look for a role. But I decided to do it from Spain itself. And at this point I had some good experience and I was feeling pretty confident and I was looking through the job listings and I just thought, screw it, I'm going to sort these listings by salary. I picked the highest one and I essentially applied to it. And this one was for £700 a day, which was a daily rate that I had never even considered possible before. And they were looking for someone with skills similar to mine. They wanted some Kubernetes experience, they wanted Java development experience. And I took the interview as a remote video call and things went well and I got this role and went back to the UK and started working at Waitrose Supermarkets, working on their online shopping website, and I was working just outside London. And after some time in this role, I realised that I hadn't taken everything into consideration. I'd had dollar signs in my eyes when I was looking at job adverts, and hadn't considered the one hour commute there and one hour commute back to work every single day. And this got to me after some time, and after six months, I had to apologetically hand in my notice. And I normally like to stay at a place for at least 12 months because I think it looks better on your CV, but I decided to end early and I actually ended up making a big change in my life. And this was basically that I'd been living in London for the majority of my career and I decided to change cities and move down to the south coast of the UK to Brighton where we are now. And when I moved to Brighton, I put my software development career on pause and decided to try out some business opportunities that I've been thinking about for some time. Anyway, the subject of that is probably another video, but let's just say that these business opportunities didn't turn out to be quite as profitable as I'd hoped, and eventually I ended up getting back into software development, but this time I was looking for a remote working role. Because I wanted to stay in Brighton to explore the local area, and I definitely didn't want to commute every day, so I went to the job adverts again, and there weren't many remote working roles. This was before 2020 after all. But there were a few as a permanent employee, so I applied to this role, got the job for £91,000, which was a significant pay drop from my previous high working as a contractor for Waitrose. 
But this was a great role. There was lots of opportunities to learn about new technologies because it was a small company. And I also tried out several different roles in this period. Firstly, as a development manager, where I was leading a team. And then as a technical architect, where I was setting the technical direction for projects and making sure that quality standards were adhered to. And there was also one pay rise during this period. And fast forward to 2021, and I was making just over £95,000, which is quite a bit higher than the average in the UK for a senior Java developer, which is 75,000. But I did have experience in quite a few technologies that not every Java developer knew about, such as Amazon Web Services and Kubernetes. And that's my entire 17 year career as a Java developer so far. And hopefully you can see that it's not just a steady rise in salary all the way, there are drops as well. And for me, this reflected a change in priority, like when I decided that a two hour commute each day wasn't for me and decided to change roles. Because it's important to consider that there are other things to think about other than salary. For example, you might want to make sure that you're working on a project that's going to stretch you. That could be a greenfield project where you get to try new technologies. Or making sure you're working for a company that has a training budget might be important because you want to be sent on courses and learn about new technologies and maybe even get certified. Or maybe the social aspect is important for you. Or maybe you've got a family and more important is the work-life balance. Wherever you are in your career right now, I'm interested to know what's your top priority. So whether that's salary or any of the other points I mentioned or something else completely, put a comment down below and we'll have a discussion. Otherwise, thanks a lot for watching. I'll maybe make another one of these videos in 17 years time and I'll see you in the next video.